birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. So I thought it's nice to talk about Swamiji this week. The song that was sung was so apt. We said with this person that has come by your wish, whom you have brought to this land, O Ramakrishna. He has all the great qualities of Shukadeva, Narada, Buddha. Who is this man? Why did he come? Why did you have to bring him down to this earth? This story we know. Sri Ramakrishna saw in a dream, in a vision, that there were seven rishis meditating. And Sri Ramakrishna says that it was beyond the realm of form. And when formless, beyond the realm of formless were seven city, seven rishis meditating in deep meditation. And the light that surrounded, the consciousness that surrounded the yogi suddenly took the form of a child condensed to become a child, came to one of the rishis, put his arm around his neck and says, I am going down, you have to come. What a wonderful reason Sri Ramakrishna had. He sees so clearly this reason. He says, I saw that rishi opened his eyes. He didn't speak anything, but his look said that the child was an object of his meditation, a dear, most dear beloved of his heart. And by his very look, as if he consented to go down, if he was God, if he was beloved, if he was the dearest one of his soul of his souls, whatever he wishes or she wishes or it wishes, that is followed. That is the power of love. And Sri Ramakrishna says, by seeing Narendranath, I could recognize that is that we see that has come for the purpose in this world. And what is the purpose of this world? The Stotra the person before the song, Vishwacharyam Jagadvandam, one word comes, Loka Kalyana Karina. One purpose of Swami Vivekananda is to go do good to the world. For that he has been brought from that meditation, shaken up, no more meditation, come and work for the good of the world. World is terribly in terrible state, people have forgotten the right way. The power has to come from all the way that meditation, power of meditation translated into power of work. And asking people to do good, you can't see it, people thinking immersed in tamas, Laziness, lethargy, despondency, hopelessness, and they think they will meditate and pray and achieve God. That God cannot come in that state. You have to go from that state to activity, from tamas to rajas to sattva. That alone is the path. There is no di direct promotion from tamas to sattva, from laziness to serenity, it doesn't happen. From serenity to activity to, from, from lethargy to activity to serenity, that is the that is the path. Swami Vivekananda, that's why inspires in the reading thing, talks with Vivekananda when he was talking with Sarat Chandra Chakravarti, one householder disciple, one lay disciple, how Swami is inspiring him to work and says, give up your religion, give up your mukti, work for others and that will bring mukti. Didn't Swamiji like mukti? His one intention was freedom. He says, I will not cease to inspire, I will not cease to work until the world becomes, world know that it is one with God. The whole world gets freedom. I will be always working. How will he work? He is not in body. He will be inspiring. The inspiration that is Swami Vivekananda. In his life, as a young child, he was very energetic, deep faith in God. Deep in meditation, always a leader of the group, always helping compassionate, that boy slowly grew to find he is their God. 
that burning question. Seems God is there, but is there anyone who has seen God? Goes to Sri Ramakrishna and finds a person that, yes, I have seen God. And not only he said, I have seen God, I say, I see God. For Sri Ramakrishna, God is ever present. Not that I saw sometimes and then I don't see now. Sri Ramakrishna always, every moment he sees God. I see God and I see it more clearly than I see you. And he said, I can make, help you to see God. That was Sri Ramakrishna saying. And Swami Vivekananda was convinced. He was convinced this there is, here is a man when some experienced person said with conviction there is so much of power in the truth. Any other person says I have seen God in doubt. But Swami Sri Ramakrishna says I see God. There is no doubt. There can be no doubt. Because there is the power of truth. Real conviction comes. Swami Vivekananda came and Sri Ramakrishna touched him. By his spiritual power, the whole thing revolved around, he was going into Samadhi. Swami Vivekananda cried out, Narendranath, young man, what are you doing to me? I have parents at my home. Not yet prepared fully to have that experience, who will come in time. Oh, let it be, in time it will come. Sri Ramakrishna touches again, and he sees again the thing comes. Always going into void. Shankaracharya describes in Viveka Churamani, Vagatam kenavanitam putra leenam idam jagar adhunaiva maya krishtam nastikim mahadadhutam. The universe was just in front of me. I was just experiencing. Who took it away? Where did it get dissolved? What this is a strange miracle that happens when samadhi comes. Everything vanishes and you go into your real state. Your ego vanishes and you are one with the reality. You are established in the real self. You are established in God. And that experience you are going to get, Sri Ramakrishna said, not now. Swami Vivekananda later describes the Sri Ramakrishna by his touch made me feel the reality of the spirit. That God is reality. God is truth. How to achieve that reality? He was Later on grew to be a very intelligent, very voracious reader. Grew to be a great orator, we all know. And big heart. How great was his intellect? Similarly great was his heart. Very loving, compassionate. Without these two, how can work be done? You are a great thinker, but you don't, your heart is small. What your thought will be there, you will go into, book, into books and what it will not touch the heart of others, you will be doing very little service to the society. Those who will read your book, they may get something intellectually convinced. Swami Vivekananda said, if we have conflict of heart and head, always follow heart. What your heart says, do that. Let aside your, what your reasoning says. That large heart words of Swami Vivekananda. He embraced his brother disciple before coming to the U.S. After moving all around India, seeing the pitiable condition of the people of India. Hari Bhai, brother Hari, I don't really understand anything of your religion. He had already had Nirvikalpa Samadhi. He had already inspired the Rajas and other persons in India. He said, I really don't understand anything of religion. Believe me, I have learned to think. My heart is enlarged. How big has become his heart, which embraced not only India, it has embraced the whole world, whole universe, was in his heart. That's what Upanishad says. When you are in awe and everything is in you, then you go beyond miseries, beyond hatred, and you are established in bliss. That was the condition of Swami Vivekananda. So much inspired, not for himself. Now Sri Ramakrishna said, you are not to be in Samadhi. Your purpose is for that purpose you have been brought. Loka Kalyana Karinam. You are brought to do good to the world. You have to inspire the world. What is inspiration? Inspiration is something bringing out all the good that we have. Human being is a mixture of good and evil. And good is like when good lies hidden and evil comes, he becomes evil person. When good comes out, he becomes a good person. 
What this inspires inspire do? They all bring out the goodness that is in us, the faith, confidence, the path, all they show. How do they do? They do by their touch, their influence, their presence, they are being born. And their power is so great, they live 30, 40 years, 50 years. After they go, they give a body, the power of inspiration doesn't diminish. It seems to be increasing. It seems to be growing. Swami Vivekananda today, as much he is known in India and abroad, he was not known during his time, though there was an electric, that electric effect was there, Swami's presence when he went. But today, the whole of India is rising after 150 years of his birth and accepting him. Big leaders are all accepting him and proclaiming that he is the only source inspired by his thought. They are ready to sacrifice and do great works. Inspirer is like a drilling machine. There is oil under the ground. How will you bring out? It is hidden under a big stone, layer of stone. Drilling machine and oil comes out. Our life is also like that. Covered with tamas, laziness, hopelessness, no courage, no strength to do, to, to find that reality. God realization, totally eschewing the ego, totally being able to feel that I am all, totally denying this body and mind. How is it possible for me? I am a weak householder, I am a weak person, ordinary person, that often we say, I am an ordinary person, how can I think that way? Swami Vivekananda comes at the drilling machine, giving up, breaking all this layer of the stone and the goodness all comes, the strength comes, hope comes. Yes, I can achieve. That's what Swami Vivekananda, he had a great task to do that. His, that was his role as inspirer. He had to instill self-confidence in the people, millions of people, 30, 30 crores, 300 million in his time, who had lost complete confidence in themselves, subjugated to foreign domination for thousand years. And the masses not taken care of before that also by the rulers. That was the country, the India was. He had to inspire them to feel that you are great. They have forgotten what their ancestors have found out, what is their philosophy of religion, what, what, how much is their power in them to, to stand in the world and say, I am not less than you. I am equal to any other person in any part of the world. Who will do that? Everyone said to the people there, Oh, your forefather was a lunatic. Your sastras are all bogus. You don't know anything. You are hopeless. Follow this way. As I say, only you will have them get something. We at our mercy. Whatever it has been taught to you is all false and maddening. Swami Vivekananda said, What are they teaching? This is all wrong. And that's why they all subjugated the nation for 1,000 years. The brave nation who is to be the leader of the leader of the world, which is called the bird, golden bird, that becomes subjugated, becomes slave. How? Because they started feeling that we are subhuman beings. Swami Vivekananda traveled and he had so much faith in our in our religion, what the religion taught that you are Brahman, the power of God is within you. Not that God has to give you power. It's already given. Just bring out that power. That was the inspiration that Swami Vivekananda could do. He brought his all knowledge from the scriptures, from the teachings, from the heritage of India and say, this is what you are. And India would rise. What will happen to West? Why did he come to the West? His primary attention was love for India. He said that. I want to go to India, I want to go to the West, so that I can be of some help to my own countrymen. How? I will get some money, some wealth, and give it to back to my people to serve. So are you going to make money or ask for loan? No, no. I will give them our wisdom, our spirituality, and they will exit. They will give their help us by giving material, Progress, prosperity, technology, we will give them our religion. Both are lacking in each other's prosperity, each other's wealth. We have spiritual wealth, they have material wealth. That was Swamiji's primary intention of coming to the West. 
that he, he knew that he had a lot to give. He was very conscious of the greatness of Eastern religion, of Indian religion, of Hindu religion, Vedanta, he said. And he knew that he, there is a lot of lacuna, space in the West, where people have never heard this. You are sinner, you have to go to the, uh, the temple or the church to pray. Unless you are clarified, you can do nothing. That is taught here also in their religion. Swamiji said, what sinner? You are the child of immortal bliss. You are the um, heir of God himself. You are made in the image of God. Sinner? It is a sin to call a man sinner. It is a standing libel on human nature. You are not sinner. You are the children of immortal bliss. You are the epitome of strength. You are the, you are the embodiment of purity. Where sinner? That strength Swamiji gave to the West. People listened to this wonderful person. First time. How inspiring was he? And what was the power behind his, 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 his personality? Just coming and standing, quite afraid to talk, always saying, no, I will go later in the parliament of religions, always avoiding the, his time for many hours. Finally he comes with prayer to Mother Saraswati. Today we are going to celebrate Saraswati Puja. It is on 14th according to the lunar calendar. We are doing it early, early on Sunday today. So he bowed down to Saraswati and Saraswati started speaking through his mouth. How? Sisters and brothers of America. There was nothing extraordinary in the world. Many people had said brothers and sisters earlier also in the same fundamental religion. It was there. It is not unique that Swami Vivekananda said. But whole audience stood up and they started clapping. They said they clapped for two minutes. Can you, can you imagine how long is two minutes to clap, to have that applaud for full two minutes? Some 7,000 people were there. Big hall was there. That has become now less. It's still there is. Hall of Columbus in um, Art Institute in Chicago. And what was there? What came? It was not the words, but the personality. It was the inspiration of Swami Vivekananda that had introduced and already started having effect on the people there. Swami Vivekananda was inspiration. Whoever he touched, this cloud gone away, sun rose, he was a blazing sun. He could just dispel the cloud from the heart of the man. He could dispel the, this tamas of the person, put them. You see, how did he form Ramakrishna organization? Few brother disciples and few other householder disciples. Fifteen of his brother disciples, not very highly caliber in intellectuality, very good and honest person. He formed Ramakrishna Mission to be guided by these 15 people who were, a, a few might be the graduates of the time, others were grade 10 pass, someone very illiterate, some didn't even know how to read and write, not even know the letter A. How miraculous work they did it. How could he infuse that power and strength and, and, and self-confidence in them? It was the inspiration of Swami Vivekananda. That would touch the heart and that would make a common man an extraordinary man, human being. He said that, I can, I can give you freedom, but can you hold it? People were saying, how many will have freedom of this political freedom of country? Are you ready to hold it? But freedom will come to this country in a very strange and new type of way, which came through non-violence. Swami Vivekananda came to the West, people were, as I say, when we are steeped in tamas and you become hopeless and you even fear your life itself, you don't want to leave. There was a case, one very famous singer at the top, very renowned, that's how our life that dwells. Once you go at the top, become a celebrity, that very person may become so depressed that he may not like to leave, changing in life. Nalini dalagata matisaya taralam tadbad jivita matisaya chapalam. That's how the life is, like a, like a drop in a lotus leaf. Living sometime, next moment it can go. That's how our status is. Now it is makuru dhanajana yovana garbam harati nimeshat kalaha sarvam. Nimeshat, in a moment, your youth, dhana, your, your 
popularity, dana dana yoga and, 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 and wealth. All may go in a moment. Don't be proud of that. That's what Shankara says in Bhaja Gopindam. And this famous singer of her times was very depressed. Her daughter died. There was a problem in life. Finally she thought she cannot have the power to leave even. She wanted to die. Someone said, who was close in the was very uh, introvert. She didn't speak her mind to anyone. But there was one friend to whom she had spoken. She said, why don't you go and see that yogi has come from India? Go and see. What yogi, what India? I didn't know anything. But let me try. She was so frustrated. And she went there. Swami Vivekananda was in his study. And he asked him without lifting his head, without looking at her, he asked her to sit down. And Swami Vivekananda started speaking about that lady, about her past, about the past incident with nobody other than her. She knew. She was surprised. Not that speaking makes one um, inspired. But after that, she comes out totally rejuvenated, having faith in life, having trying to um, gain the good things what is in her. How this faith comes? He could just dispel the cloud, the gloom from the mind of a person. That was the inspiration. Talking was the little thing. But his very presence could inspire a person to have the strength to leave. One who didn't have the strength to leave, that was Swami Vivekananda's power. And she lived a very good life, served the community, served the um, humanity with her beautiful song. Another person, very rich, richest person of you at that time. There must be some problem. One day he comes, where Swamiji was there, they didn't ask any permission, he was very, mm, very like a root, he didn't listen to anyone, he didn't know to, because he was so rich, maybe that's why he was um, arrogant time. He doesn't ask anyone, straight goes to Swamiji's um, study. And there must have been trouble, that's what not told, but why would he go to meet Swami Vivekananda, you see? There must be something coming up in his mind, or some trouble was there. Swamiji again, talks with him about the wealth and how to utilize the big wealth that he had brought without looking at him. He was very angry, giving someone, giving him advice. He never learned advice from anyone. He said, I will give advice to others. Where is another person giving me advice? Then why did you come? Why did you come to this Indian saint? There was some need. You were feeling something to get. In the moment, the ego couldn't adjust that. Our ego is like that. When some good thing is told by our friend, we immediately, sometimes it reacts. Sometimes we don't like to hear. But it is the beginning of a reaction of the ego. Then you go home, then again, remember what it has been said. It makes sense. When you are pulled down, when ego has tried to adjust, then you accept, yes, he said good thing. Hello, you told very nice, I'm sorry I was arrogant that time. This person, just went out of the uh, hall without saying anything. Swami Vivekananda saying, use your money in charity, give for the good of the people. This person was really angry. Then Rockefeller. Then, after one week, he comes to Swami Vivekananda again in the same way. Throws him a check below him and he had given to some charity, big sum. And says, Swami, now you should thank me. What you said, advice I have accepted, now you should thank me that I have given money. Swami, he said, no, no, it is not I should thank you, you should thank me. That is the inspiration. Why? I guided you to do the right thing. That's why you should thank me that you are properly utilizing the money you have earned through hard work and success in your business. You have to think that way. So these are the two great incidents. One person was there, one family, very depressed in life, nothing to do. Wife said, someone says, uh, there is Swami coming from India, let us go and try. So they go and Swami speaks to them, I forgot the name of those person. And after that, they come out so to talking with Swami Vivekananda for 15-20 minutes. The husband says, yes, what he said makes sense, there is some purpose of life. So rejuvenated, the wife says, my husband, I found, I saw his eyes. It were now not the, those eyes were depressed, depression gone. Swamiji was the medicine for depression, for hopelessness, 
all those could be removed by his presence. And luckily, for this great power, though they come, their power doesn't remain only with the body and mind intact. Power remains, body mind goes. Inspiration remains still with the same intensity that comes. Only we need to go to Swami Vivekananda as Rockefeller went, as Madam Kalve went. If we don't go to Swami Vivekananda, if you don't expose yourself to Swami Vivekananda, how will it come? So we need to go to him and still that inspiration. How he inspired, how he formed the Ramakrishna mission. He comes in 1893 and gives talk and catapulizes all of uh, America with his talks and thoughts which they never heard. There was a lot of opposition. Some people tried to even kill him. Some people tried to insult him. Swamiji was undaunted. He was so strong. But he never had anything bad to say to the people who insulted him. He had reason for that. He was all love for everyone. And inspired people, gave him the idea that the reality is consciousness. The God is in you. God is in all human beings. You don't say God is only in heaven. That's one way to say. But God, you have to bring God from heaven and establish it in all hearts. We have to establish. He is already there. You have to know this. That was his saying. This philosophy of Vedanta he brought and taught this. People accepted this. People accepted this philosophy. And how much they accepted? Some of them gave up everything there, followed him back to India, which was thought to be the country of snake charmer, or evil, disease, malaria, what was not there. They gave up everything, followed him. And for what? To serve India. Mm, our mm, MacLeod, Joseph and MacLeod asked, Swami, how can I, how can, what can I do for you? So much she loved Swamiji. She never said, she used to say, I'm not a disciple of Swamiji. I'm a friend of Swamiji. Always used to say. But how much she loved Swami Vivekananda? So once she went and, uh, to, and Swamiji's room was closed. This was not time that Swamiji already established. And, um, and uh, they say now it's time to close um, the room. It will open in the evening. She said, what are you saying? I have come all the way from US and if Swami Vivekananda was there, he would call me. Go and open. He made the room open. And she went there inside the Swamiji's room. How much love she had. It was not arrogance. You see, arrogance and love is, is understood by how you do. It was not arrogance. It was her love. He said, if Swamiji was there in life, in body and mind, he would have come to receive me. No one you sent. I have come here. Open the door. Door was made open. She went inside and sat on the bed of Swami Vivekananda. How much love and identification she had with Swami Vivekananda. Many were displeased, you couldn't understand. When Sri Ramakrishna was feeding um, fruit, food to cat in the temple, which was to be offered to um, the deity, people were all very angry. Why is this feeding the cat? It has mean to offer to the deity, to Mother Kali. How could they see that Sri Ramakrishna is seeing Mother Kali in the cat itself? Like that, how could they understand what the mind of how much love that Dantin Joseph and MacLeod had for Swami Vivekananda? They used to say she had given her room there. Now, when the president's got to it there, that was the guest room that time. They get her from that, um, what they used to call that name. And there, they saw their mother, this uh, MacLeod used to keep Swamiji's photo on a table and used to dance in the love of Swami Vivekananda. That to when she said, Swamiji, what can I do for you? She said, if you want to do something for me, serve India, love India. That was his thing, always directed there. Sister Nivedita met Swamiji, very strong lady, very, had a great zeal to work, already was a teacher. Swamiji found, she is lioness. And she saw, Sister Nivedita said, Swamiji, I want to go to India. India is a very difficult place. You will find a lot of opposition. It's not easy. The society, the culture, the hatred they have towards the British people. How do you stand that? He said, I will. I can do it with blessing. Swamiji blessed. She came and she conquered the heart of all Indians and became a leader in inspiring them. That was Swamiji. Swami Vivekananda inspired by Sri Ramakrishna. Swami Vivekananda inspiring Sister Nivedita to give her life for the growth and independence of India, for the growth of women, 
How must he work what Swamiji wanted? Let me read how Swamiji inspired the brother disciples back in India in 1894 when he came. He had that vision. There is a great thing has to be done to India. So how much power and what a vision Swami Vivekananda had. My dear Akhandananda, written from US in 1894. Go from door to door among the poor and lower classes of the town of Khetri and teach them religion. Also let them have more oral lessons on geography and such other subjects. No good will come of sitting idle and having princely dishes and saying, Ramakrishna, O Lord, unless you can do some good to the poor. Go to other villages from time to time and teach the people the arts of life as well as religion. Work, worship and jnana. First work and your mind will be purified. Otherwise everything will be fruitless like pouring oblations on a pile of ashes instead of in the sacred fire. When Gunanidhi comes, one person, move from door to door of the poor and the destitute in every village of Rajputana, that is Rajasthan. If people object to the kind of food you take, give it up immediately. You see, it is preferable to live on grass for the sake of doing good to others. The Gerwa robe is not for enjoyment. Gerwa robe is like the opera robes of a monk. It's not for enjoyment. It is the banner of heroic work. You must give your body, mind and speech to the welfare of the world. You have read Matri Devo Bhava, Pitri Devo Bhava. Look upon your mother as God, look upon your father as God. But I say, Daritra Devo Bhava, Murkha Devo Bhava, the poor, the illiterate, the ignorant, the afflicted, let these be your God. Know that service to these alone is the highest religion. How he's inspiring and he became one of the prominent persons, Swami Akhandananda, to start first relief work as early as 1897 in Murshidabad, inspired by Swamiji. So much he loved Swami Vivekananda. Like that the work began. How great leaders of uh, India were um, inspired by Swamiji. See, Chakravarti Rajagopalachari find understood the, the gift of Swamiji to India. He says, Swami Vivekananda saved Hinduism and saved India. But for him, we would have lost our religion and would not have gained our freedom. We therefore owe everything to Swami Vivekananda. May his faith, his courage, his wisdom ever inspire us so that we may keep safe the treasure we have received from him. We know the famous quote is of Mahatma Gandhi. I have gone through his words very thoroughly and after having gone through them, the love that I had for my country became a thousandfold. Unless that love is there, unless the heart expands with the love, how can it work, sacrifice, find a new way? So many challenges he had to face, Mahatma Gandhi had to face. He started work with non-violence, suddenly a movement was going on, suddenly a section of the people, public became violent. Totally stopped the movement. Many were angry. This was going on, why did he do that? So he had to face opposition in his own group. He was relentless. He had some way to give and Finally, he conquered, he got success. How much was the strength that um, Mahatma Gandhi had and how Swami Vivekananda inspired him? He couldn't meet Swami Vivekananda, but um, he had read Radhyoga when he was in London, just it had come out. Roma Rola said very nicely, what was Swami Vivekananda? Roma Rola was a um, French literature, Nobel Prize winner, and he wrote a book on Swami Vivekananda and his universal gospel. In that he writes, his words are great music, phrases in the style of Beethoven, stirring rhythm like the march of Handel choruses. I cannot touch these sayings of his, scattered as they are, through the pages of books at thirty years' distance, without receiving a thrill through my body like an electric shock. And what shocks, what transports must have, must have been produced when in burning words they issued from the lips of the hero. Reading the book, he feels the shock coming, he feels the power coming through just reading the books. 
So how that those that infused on the written printed letters have been black and white. The mind of Swamiji, the inspiration was all working through even the letters, even the photograph. There are many people just see Swamiji's photograph and feel inspired. His eyes, his just appearance, his words of course, his thought of course. Shubhas Chandra Bose wrote, I cannot write about Vivekananda without going into raptures. Subhas Chandra Bose was a great nationalist who fought for the freedom of India, very highly respected in India as a, he's called Netaji, the leader. This, this um, honorific title is given to him. Few indeed could comprehend or fathom him. Then he says, reckless in his sacrifice, unceasing in his activity, Boundless in his love, profound and versatile in his wisdom, exuberant in his emotion, merciless in his attack, but yet simple as a child. He was a rare personality of this world of ours. He doesn't say of our times, he says of this world of ours for all the times. A yogi of the highest spiritual level in direct communion with truth who had for the time being consecrated his whole life to the moral and spiritual uplift of his nation and of humanity. If he had been alive, I would have been at his feet. I would have been his disciple. I would have given everything that was. He was also a great soul, great power, who worked so hard for the freedom, independence movement of India. <laughs> Created very much honor throughout India, the great uh, leader, that he said, if I could find him, I would have given myself to his lotus feet. That was the influence that Swami Vivekananda was, great inspiration. Let me read from his letter to his brother disciples, and again in 1894, the brother disciples when, were in Baranavi, in Alambad, from Baranavi they had moved. Again he says, go from village to village, do good to humanity and to the world at large. Go to hell yourself to buy salvation for others. See the words. Whenever you think of yourself, you are bound to feel restless. What business have you to do with peace, my boy? You have renounced everything. Come, now is the turn for you to banish the desire for peace and that for mukti too. He's saying to his brother disciples who has given their life for freedom, for attaining God. To him he's just dragging from meditation and spiritual practice as if he's not dragging. In fact, it's a different kind of spiritual practice. What has been done in the vision of Sri Ramakrishna, Rishi was meditating. Come, you have to go. I'm going there. He was dragged from his meditation. Swami Vivekananda himself. Now he's dragging his brother disciple from meditation to work for the poor. Don't worry in the least, heaven or hell, or bhakti or mukti, don't care for anything, but go, my boy, and spread the name of the Lord from door to door. It is only by being good to others that one attains to one's own good, and it is by leading others to bhakti and mukti that one attains them oneself. Take that up. Forget your own self for it. Be mad over the idea. As Sri Ramakrishna used to love you, as I love you, come, love the world like that, bring all together. <clears throat> Remember these few points, he says. We are sannyasins, monks, who have given up everything, bhakti and mukti and enjoyment and all. <clears throat> Number two, to do the highest good to the world, everyone down to the lowest, this is our vow. Welcome mukti or hell. Whichever commit. Ramakrishna number three. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa came for the good of the world. Call him a man or God or an incarnation, just as you please. Accept him each in your own light. Number four. He who will bow before him will be converted into purest gold that very moment. Go with this message from door to door. If you can, my boy, and all your disquietude will be at an end. Never fear. Where is the room for fear? Caring for nothing whatsoever is a part of your life. You have so long spread his name and your character all around. 
well and good. Now spread them in an organized way. The Lord is with you. Take heart. This is the inspiration that made the band of his brother disciples, 15 ordinary monks, into great monks. Of course, we say ordinary, they were touched by Sri Ramakrishna, always there were some great others. Seemingly they were latent, the goodness was latent, the power was latent. Swami Vivekananda all put that fire in them. At the end I write this letter, then to close the solitary book. He says, a huge spiritual, again a letter to Brother Disciples, 1894. A huge spiritual tidal wave is coming. He who is low shall become noble, and he who is ignorant shall become the teacher of the great scholars through his grace. Uddhisthata, Jagrata, Prabhupada, Varani, Bodhata. Arise, away, and stop not till the goal is reached. Life is ever expanding, contraction is death. The self-seeking man who is looking after his personal comforts and leading a lazy life, there is no room for him even in hell. He alone is a child of Sri Ramakrishna who is moved to pity for all creatures and exerts himself for them even at the risk of incurring personal damnation. Itaro Kripanaha, others are vulgar people. Whoever at this great spiritual juncture would stand up with a courageous heart and go on spreading from door to door, from village to village, his message is alone my brother and a son of his. This is the best. Who He who is Sri Ramakrishna's child does not seek his personal good. Pranatya evi parakalyana chikinshava They wish to do good to others even when at the point of death. Those that care for their personal comforts and seek a lazy life, who are ready to sacrifice all before their personal whims, are none of us. Let them back off while yet there is time. Propagate his character, his teachings, his religion. This is the only spiritual practice, the only worship. This verity is the means and this is the goal. Arise, arise, a tidal wave is coming, onward. Men and women, down to the chandala, all are pure in his eyes. Onward, onward, there is no time to care for name or fame or mukti or bhakti. We shall look to these some other time. Now, in this life, let us infinitely spread his lofty character, his sublime life, his infinite show. This is the only word. There is nothing else to do. Wherever his name will reach, the veriest worm will attain divinity. Nay, is actually attaining it. You have got eyes and don't you see it? Is it a child's play? Is it silly prattle? Is it foolery? Uddhisthata, Jagrata, arise, awake, great Lord. He is at work our, at our back. I cannot write anymore. Onward, I only tell you this that whoever reads this letter will imbibe my spirit. Have faith onward, great Lord. I feel as if somebody is moving my hand to write in this way. Onward, great Lord. Everyone will be swept away. Take care, he is coming. Whoever will be ready to serve him. No, not him, but his children. The poor and the downtrodden, the sinful, and the afflicted, down to the very world, who will be ready to serve these, in them he will manifest himself. Through their tongue, the goddess of learning, Saraswati, herself will speak, and the Divine Mother, the, dim, the embodiment of all power, will enthrone herself in their hearts. Yours affectionately, Vivekananda. This was how he would instill the strength, the guidance, the inspiration in the hearts of his brother disciples. He is still doing to us today. And we pray to Swami Vivekananda that his spirit should work through us and the gloom, the darkness, the hopelessness that is sometimes trying to cover and the cloud covering sun in us may be removed by his mere name by his thought in us and may we see the light.